This is the hour, on the solemnity of Saint Joseph, husband of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So much is happening, so quickly these days, just as the Lord said it would. Indeed, the closer we draw to the eye of the storm, the faster the winds of change are blowing. This man-made storm is moving at an ungodly pace to shock and awe humanity into a place of subservience. All, for the common good, of course, under the nomenclature of the Great Reset, in order to build back better. The messianists behind this new utopia are beginning to pull out all the tools for their revolution, war, economic turmoil, famine, and plagues. It is truly coming upon many, like a thief in the night. The operative word is, thief, which is at the heart of this neo-communistic movement, see Isaiah's prophecy of global communism. And all this would be a cause for the man without faith to tremble. As Saint John heard in a vision 2000 years ago of the people of this hour saying, Who can compare with the beast or who can fight against it? Reverend 13 to 4. But for those whose faith is in Jesus, they are going to see the miracles of divine providence soon, if not already. The late consecration. By this, I do not mean that the remnant will be spared suffering. The world has gone completely astray and the return is going to be painful. As Jesus said to Saint Faustina, In the old covenant I sent prophets wielding thunderbolts to my people. Today I am sending you with my mercy to the people of the whole world. I do not want to punish aching mankind, but I desire to heal it, pressing it to my merciful heart. I use punishment when they themselves force me to do so. My hand is reluctant to take hold of the sword of justice. Before the day of justice I am sending the day of mercy. Jesus to Saint Faustina, Divine Mercy in my soul, Diary, N. 1588. The way in which Jesus wants to triumph over evil was through his mother, who is a symbol of the church. Why? Because it was Eve, the mother of the living, who led mankind into the fall and all the catastrophic effects of original sin. Now, Our Lady's fiat is that which has undone Eve's sin, beginning the reversal of the satanic order that sin ushered in and which disturbed the plan of God to bring all creation into perfection. As Saint Irenaeus says, being obedient she became the cause of salvation for herself and for the whole human race. Hence not a few of the early fathers gladly assert that the knot of Eve's disobedience was untied by Mary's obedience. What the Virgin Eve bound through her disbelief, Mary loosened by her faith. Comparing her with Eve, they call Mary, the mother of the living, and frequently claim, death through Eve, life through Mary. Catechism of the Catholic Church, N. 494. On this universal level, if victory comes it will be brought by Mary. Christ will conquer through her because he wants the Church's victories now and in the future to be linked to her. Pope John Paul II, Crossing the Threshold of Hope, page 221. As I have documented in my book The Final Confrontation, the end game of Satan began with the birth of the so-called Enlightenment period. In the following four centuries, seeds of philosophic pride were gathered. Deism, materialism, scientism, evolutionism, atheism, Marxism, etc. until they finally found the perfect field in which to be sown, Russia. As Pope Pius XI pointed out in his powerful and prophetic encyclical, Divine Redemptorus, this country and its people were usurped by those authors and abettors who considered Russia the best prepared field for experimenting with a plan elaborated decades ago, and who from there continue to spread it from one end of the world to the other. Our words are now receiving sorry confirmation from the spectacle of the bitter fruits of subversive ideas, which we foresaw and foretold, and which are in fact multiplying fearfully in the countries already stricken, or threatening every other country of the world. Pope Pius XI, Divini Redemptoris, N. 24, 6. The organization of the secret societies was needed to transform the theorizings of the philosophers into a concrete and formidable system for the destruction of civilization. Nesta Webster, World Revolution, page 4, Emphasis Mine. This, in a word, was the sign of the dragon that St. John foresaw in Revelation chapter 12 verse 3. 
But another sign also appeared at the birth of the Enlightenment in the 16th century. A woman clothed in the sun. Her clothing was shining like the sun, as if it were sending out waves of light, and the stone, the crag on which she stood, seemed to be giving out rays. Saint Juan Diego, Nikon Mapahua, Don Antonio Valeriano, c. 1520-1605 AD, n. 17-18. A great sign appeared in the sky. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon, with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Reverend 12 to 1 4. Hence, this woman also reappeared again in 1917, a month before Lenin stormed Moscow and gave birth to communism. God's remedy was simple, voiced through the woman herself. I shall come to ask for the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart, and the communion of reparation on the first Saturdays. If my requests are heeded, Russia will be converted, and there will be peace. If not, Russia will spread her errors throughout the world, causing wars and persecutions of the Church. The good will be martyred, the Holy Father will have much to suffer, various nations will be annihilated. The rest is history. We did not listen to Our Lady. The consecration was not done, at least not as requested. And how many made reparation through the first Saturdays? Years later in a private revelation to Sister Lucia, one of the Fatima seers, Our Lady appeared with the infant Jesus, saying, They did not want to pay attention to my request. Like the King of France, they will be sorry, but it will be too late. Russia will already have spread its errors throughout the world, causing wars and persecutions of the Church. The Holy Father will have much to suffer. June 13, 1929 To the late Father Stefano Gabi in 1990, Our Lady repeated, Russia has not been consecrated to me by the Pope together with all the bishops, and thus, she has not received the grace of conversion and has spread her errors throughout all parts of the world, provoking wars, violence, bloody revolutions and persecutions of the Church and of the Holy Father. Given in Portugal on May 13, 1990 on the anniversary of the first apparition there. With imprimatur. See also her preceding messages on March 25, 1984, May 13, 1987, and June 10, 1987. Notes Cardinal Raymond Burke. Certainly, Pope St. John Paul II consecrated the world, including Russia, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary on March 25, 1984. But, today, once again, we hear the call of Our Lady of Fatima to consecrate Russia to her Immaculate Heart, in accord with her explicit instruction. Cardinal Raymond Burke, May 19, 2017, LifeSiteNews.com And now, in what is no doubt a significant event, Pope Francis has at last called for the consecration of Russia, and Ukraine, in union with the bishops of the world, on March 25, 2022. This, too, fulfills another prophetic word from Our Lady as to its timing. Particular circumstances have not yet allowed the Holy Father to expressly consecrate Russia to me, as I have repeatedly requested. As I have already told you, this consecration will be made to me when bloody events are now in progress. I bless the courageous act of my Pope, who wanted to entrust the world and all nations to my Immaculate Heart, I receive it with love and gratitude and, for this act, I promise to intervene in order to greatly shorten the hours of purification and to make the ordeal less burdensome. My daughter, I know and share your sorrow, I, the mother of love and sorrow, suffer greatly because of, not having been heard otherwise all this would not have happened. I have repeatedly asked for the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart, but my cry of pain has remained unheard. My daughter, this war will bring death and destruction, 
those living will not be enough to bury the dead. My children, pray for the consecrated, who have abandoned charity, true faith and morality, desecrating the body of my son driving the faithful to tremendous errors, and this will be the cause of terrible suffering. My children, pray, pray, pray very much. According to a recent message, Our Lady has made good on that promise. Little children, the times are being shortened. You have come to the time of reckoning. Obey my requests and your father will still give you times of final possibilities. Better late than never. It didn't have to be this way. The peace Our Lady promised through the conversion of Russia could have come, just as heaven promised. As Jesus said to servant of God Luisa Picaretta after World War I. So, the chastisements that have occurred are nothing other than the preludes of those that will come. How many more cities will be destroyed? My justice can bear no more. My will wants to triumph, and would want to triumph by means of love in order to establish its kingdom. But man does not want to come to meet this love, therefore, it is necessary to use justice. Jesus to Servant of God, Luisa Picaretta, November 16, 1926. In this regard, the book of Revelation is being fulfilled at this hour, not because it was written in stone, but precisely because St. John foresaw the consequences of the free will of the people of God beforehand. He foresaw and heard the disobedience and unheeded warnings of Jesus to the Church. He foresaw the apostasy that would give rise to the lawlessness that is now spreading throughout the world, not in the form of anarchy, at least not yet, but by institutions and judiciary branches overturning and trampling upon the laws of God, upon life itself. And hence, he foresaw that our past century would pave the way for the rise of the beast, an antichrist, who, building on the foundation of the errors of Russia, would attempt to erect a new tower of Babel through science, Pharmakia, Rev. 1823, in order to control the world through a digital ID, CF, Rev. 13, 16-17. But for those reading Heaven's messages on Countdown to the Kingdom, it remains eminently clear that God has not abandoned His children. Jesus has not betrayed His bride, nor will He. This, too, is recorded in the scriptures. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God, that there she might be taken care of for 1260 days. Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. Revelation chapter 12 verse 6. In a rare message to Gisela Cardia, the Heavenly Father allegedly spoke to her recently, promising. I, your Father, am here to remind you that I love you all. Do not be afraid. Do not worry, let go of human things and have faith. Everything will be fulfilled according to my plan. The angels, in the place blessed by me, will protect you and make you safe. They will make you invisible and I will not leave you lacking for anything. I am a good father, but I am a just father. I love you, my, children, I love you so much, do not be afraid, do not fear, all that you will have will be by my grace alone. It is necessary that a small flock subsist, no matter how small it might be. Pope Paul VI, The Secret Paul VI, Jean Gatton, page 152-153, to reference, 7, page X. Let them implore also the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Virgin who, having crushed the head of the serpent of old, remains the sure protectress and invincible, help of Christians. Pope Pius XI, Divini Redemptoris, n. 59. On this solemnity of Saint Joseph, recall how he took his family and fled the storm of Herod unleashed against the innocents, but only after he consecrated himself to Our Lady. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary your wife into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. Today's Gospel. So too, the Herods of our day are unleashing a storm against the world so as to remake it in their own image and hold on to their power. 
The ten horns that you saw represent ten kings who have not yet been crowned. They will receive royal authority along with the beast for one hour. They are of one mind and will give their power and authority to the beast. They will fight with the lamb, but the lamb will conquer them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those with him are called, chosen, and faithful. Reverend 17. 12 to 13. Precisely because we are entering the hour of the beast, we are also entering the hour of God's providence for his people. It is necessary for us to place ourselves, then, in the care of both Saint Joseph and Our Lady. If it was good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. The consecration is late. It can no longer forestall the purification of the world that must now come. But this simple act of obedience of the hierarchy, the size of a mustard seed, is enough for God to move mountains. And he's going to. For our part, this is the hour of raw faith, to have an invincible faith in Jesus. There is still time to fulfill the first Saturdays beginning this April. And finally, faith that is not dead is accompanied by obedience. That also means entering into the sanctuary of His divine will, a gift that is being offered to us in this hour. The divine justice imposes chastisements, but neither these nor God's enemies get close to those souls who live in the divine will. Know that I will have regard for the souls who live in my will, and for the places where these souls reside. I place the souls who live completely in my will on earth, in the same condition as the blessed, in heaven. Therefore, live in my will and fear nothing.